Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Over the years, I've done two or three videos demonstrating how to remove a chain link fence from an image. This is a problem you'll often encounter when you're taking pictures of animals at a zoo. Now, in those videos, the methods I demonstrated, although effective, were time-consuming and labor-intensive. Well, recently, Adobe added some new tools to Photoshop that make removing a chain link fence very, very easy. And in today's video, I'm going to show you two different ways to do it. Now, the method that I'm calling game changing is actually the second method. I apologize for bearing the lead, but there's a reason why I'm doing that. And you'll understand when I get there. This first method in order to use it, you have to go to Photoshop Preferences and make sure that you have something set a specific way. To get to Preferences on a Mac, go up to Photoshop 2026 menu, and on a Mac, it's not called Preferences, it's called Settings. On a PC, it's under the Edit menu, and I'm pretty sure on a PC it's called Preferences. Either way, once you go there, another menu will appear. From this menu, go down and choose Image Processing. When you get this Image Processing Preferences panel, what you want to make sure is that the Remove Tool Processing is set to More Stable. By default, it will be faster. Now, I do recommend that you change everything on this panel the way I have it set. Specifically, select Subject and Remove Background. Change it to Cloud. By default, it will be on Device. Change Selections Processing to More Stable, change Remove Tool Processing to More Stable, and finally, change Enhanced Detail Processing to More Stable. Once you do that, click OK. Then, to remove the fence, you need to get to the Remove Tool. The Remove Tool keyboard shortcut is the J key, but be aware that J key keyboard shortcut is shared by a number of different tools. If we go over to the Tool panel over here on the left and click, You'll notice that that J key keyboard shortcut is shared by the spot healing brush, the healing brush, the patch tool, and so on. Make sure you're using the remove tool. It's a little band-aid with a couple stars. Once that tool is active, at the top, you'll see a drop-down, find distractions. Click on that and click wires and cables. Now, of course, this specific function is meant for power lines, but I found that it does work sometimes on chain link fences. Now, I've tried it on five different images. On two images, it worked almost perfectly each time, and this was one of the images. And on two other images, it didn't work at all. It, couldn't, it came up with an error. It said it couldn't find power line. On the fifth image, it mostly worked, and I was able to rescue it by using some other remove tool functions and getting, get it to work. But it still was a lot faster than any of those other methods I've demonstrated over the years. The second method I'll be showing you in this video is often more effective, but it uses generative AI. And because it uses generative AI, it may substantially change the animal or change the background. That method I would use as a last resort because, as I mentioned, and you'll see when we do it, it may change things drastically. And at least as far as I'm concerned, I tend to not like to change the look of the animal that much or even the background that much, and you may not be able to avoid that if you use the second method. Now, you could see here, it did a pretty good job. It did leave kind of a piece of grass right here, but you do have the remove tool um, still active. So you could come in here and just get rid of, like if it left a piece of the fence or if it left a piece of grass like this, just draw on it. If you have up here set to remove after each stroke, it will take it away as soon as you do it. It does look maybe a little funky in here. And you can see these little areas maybe in his fur uh, don't look quite right, but you could clean those up with the remove tool. But you can see overall, in my opinion, it did a really very good job. And it does it, even though it took a while, it's a lot faster than those previous methods I demonstrated. Now, let me show you the second method, which I actually think is a game changer, but you know, it may not work the way you want it to work all the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the history panel and we're going to go back to when we just opened this image up. So we have our our chain link back. What we need to do to use generative AI is to select everything. So on a Mac, hit Command A. On a PC, hit Control A. And when you do, you'll have the march marching ants going along the outside of the image. Once you have that, the contextual taskbar will have a generative fill button. Click on that. 
Now, you need to use a very specific model. So if we go here where right now mine says G, yours might say FI. Either way, click on that and make sure that you're using the Gemini 3 with Nano Banana Pro. I don't name it. I don't know why they name it that. So we're going to go with this. So make sure you're using that model. Then for the prompt, you need to tell it exactly what you want done. If you just say remove fence, it may modify the animal behind the fence. So you have to be a little more specific. Uh, so I'm going to type remove the, oops, the chain link fence that is in front of the animal. I'm not going to write bobcat because I don't know if it knows that's a bobcat. I'm just going to say animal. And then we'll click generate. Now it will use, you know, generative AI to remove the fence. But what might happen is it may change the background. It may change the animal a little bit. I've had it actually switch this bobcat from having the body on the right side of the image to having the body on the left side of the image. So it sometimes will substantially change what you're seeing. And beyond that, um, now here it did pretty good. It did just as good, in my opinion, as the um, as the previous method. So you can see here. But but I should add, it gives you a single variation. If you're not using the uh, actual Adobe models, it will give you a single variation. So if it didn't work, you'd have to try it again. You can see here it left the piece of grass intact all the way through. If you want that there, if you don't want it there, whatever. Because, you know, the original image, it could be a before, there was a piece of grass going through the image. But you can see here, actually, it worked beautifully. But what I want to show you now is a couple of the images where that first method didn't work at all. This was one of them. I wanted to remove the chain link fence behind the bald eagle. When I wrote that, and I, or when I did that with the other previous tool, it came up with an error and said it couldn't find power lines. But with generative AI, it will work. So we're going to, uh, again, select a, a, any everything, Command or Control A. Then we're going to go up to generative fill. Just double check we're using that model, Gemini 3 with Nano Banana. And we're going to write remove the chain link fence that is behind the bird. All right. And then we're going to click generate. And again, you know, it's using Nano Banana. And I found that this sometimes, like a couple times, it changes the background into a way I didn't really like it. Uh, but I'll show you what you could do if it does malfunction uh, this time. We'll see what it does. But as it comes through right now. Okay, actually, that doesn't look too bad. So it removed the chain link fence. If you don't like what it did, what you could do, because it only gives you this single variation, is you could change your prompt a little bit or reprompt it right here. If you still want to use that same prompt, just click this little icon right here and it will give you a second variation. So you could do that. Now this does use generative credits so that you have to have a well of generative credits. Um, you get I don't know how many every month. It depends, I think, on what your subscription is. Um, but either way, it's going to use generative credits. But if you really have a really nice image from an animal, of an animal that was at a zoo, it may be worth it to you to get rid of that fence. Now, in this case here, I kind of like what it did. And you can see now it's just white. So I like that first one better. I think that looked better. And then I could do my editing here. Like, I didn't crop these at all. So I would do some cropping. Now this one here, uh, this was difficult. Uh, the other method, it again came up with an error, couldn't find any power lines. So we have this uh, chain link fence in the background. And I tried this a couple different ways. And this was one that would sometimes get changed substantially. Like one time it put as though this... Uh, you had like a hardwood deck in your backyard. It had like a piece of hardwood, like on the, ch like his chin was resting on it. Uh, this is actually a baby. This is probably the female, right? So this was a baby here, but either way, I want to get rid of this fence. So we're going to select everything again, command or control A, we'll go up to generative fill. And then I'm going to uh, be kind of specific here. I'm going to say, remove the 
chain link fence that is behind the animal on the right side of the image. All right, so we're being pretty specific. I found that actually with Nano Banana, um, that being more specific sometimes helps. Whereas it seems with Adobe's um, models, if you're specific, sometimes it screws up more so. Um, but it seems like with Gemini, Nano Banana 3 Pro, whatever, Gemini 3, Nano Banana Pro, uh, <laughs> it works a little better. Why is that such a stupid name? So anyway, actually, this looks pretty good. Uh, you know, not too bad at all. Now, again, you could get another variation. Just click right there and you'll get a second variation and you could see what it does. But I think this really is a game changer, in my opinion. I really do like this. I think... I mean, I'm not going to enter these images in a contest, and I don't think anyone should enter them in the contest if they're changing the image in such a way, removing fences and things like that. I'm not going to, you know, try to get it published at National Geographic or anything like that. But if it's just an image you want to enjoy on your computer, or maybe print, put it on your wall, I don't see anything wrong with doing this. Now, you can see this one, it changed it substantially. I like that kind of first one a little better where it's a little more realistic. Here's a couple I did before I did the video. I kind of like this one. Thought that looked pretty good. And this is the bird, uh, the eagle. I thought this looked pretty good as well. So there are two different methods to remove a chain link fence that may be in your image of most often an uh, animal that is at the zoo. Hopefully you find these useful. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.